Hey there, folks. Welcome to Spectrum Pulse. We talk about music, movies, art, and culture. And today we're going to be talking about the new album from Within Temptation, titled Hydra. Now, I've mentioned in the past that when I leaped from pop music into symphonic metal in my teenage years, I primarily listened to acts like Blind Guardian and Nightwish, at least initially. But it wasn't long before I discovered the act that was often considered to be Nightwish's primary competitor in the realm of symphonic metal, as they both started in the same year and had uncannily similar album release schedules. And that band was Within Temptation, a band I've always consistently liked for the past decade, and one that I've always held up as the necessary rational counterpart to Nightwish's brand of turbulent insanity. Where Nightwish dove into wildly imaginative yet bloated excess, Within Temptation, they towed the line a little bit closer to the mainstream, with tighter lyrics and riffs, Sharon Denadel's beautiful vocals, and a sound that would be more easily accessible to the crowd who took the wary step away from Evanescence into something significantly heavier. And yet, as much as I like with them Temptations consistently high quality, they aren't a band that has ever really managed to surprise me. And they've only ever had moments of pure transcendent awesomeness. Now don't get me wrong, all their albums are good and definitely worth your time, but as a band, I wouldn't quite say that they've ever really stepped out of their comfort zone. Heavy enough to be considered metal, but not too heavy or weird enough to be inaccessible to any sort of casual fan. In fact, if you're looking for a great entry point for some Symphonic Metal, Within Temptation would be a fine start. But on the other hand, while lead singer Sharon Denadel might have been started her career collaborating with Arjen Lucasen, her most recent release prior to this Within, with Within Temptation was an album of metal covers of pop and rock song that included David Guetta, Bruno Mars, and Enrique Iglesias. And thus, I was more than a little skeptical going into their most recent album, Hydra. Now look, I did like their previous major release, The Unforgiving, an attempt at a concept album, a pulpy urban fantasy tale that worked more often than it didn't, but between the delays and the bizarre list of collaborators on this album, they gave me a fair bit of pause. And while some were saying Within Temptation was returning to their heavier roots and showing the many different sides of their music, look, I had to wonder at what point would Within Temptation lose all of their unique personality altogether in catering to the mainstream. I prayed for the best, but look, I expected the worst. What'd I get? Well, okay, you can all relax, because Hydra by Within Temptation is a very good, possibly even great album. And most of my fears were put completely to rest, especially with regards to their collaborators. But on the other hand, as a fan of this band, I can't help but feel that this album should have been better. And most of it is linked to a strange problem that I never saw coming, but yet remained a very persistent annoyance all throughout this record and really did bother me. But first, okay, let's get the good pieces out of the way because the core of what makes Within Temptation a great symphonic metal band, it's all pretty much still here. The band has a knack for great melody lines and hooks and even better crescendos, as Sharon Denadel's voice has somehow only gotten better as she mostly avoids her troublesome lower range and it sticks with her ethereal upper range it sounds even more gorgeous and effortless than usual and all the musicians here are on great form as a stylistic shift towards a heavier direction requires some pretty serious playing from pretty much everyone involved and you know what they deliver in particular i like to single out mike coolen's drumming because there's a layer of texture diversification and presence in the drums in the mix that really stuck with me in a good way i really dug it and the next Big surprise is that all of the guest stars on this album, they deliver in a big way. Tarya continues to sound phenomenal, and her interplay with Sharon shows that the two of them wanted to make just make a collaboration album. I would buy it in a heartbeat. Howard Jones, former Killswitch Engage frontman, does better than expected on his track, considering I never really liked Killswitch Engage. And Dave Perner provides a great counterbalance to Sharon on the final track, Whole World is Watching. Even Exhibit, yeah, the rapper, the gangster rapper, actually steps up his game and delivers a solid and completely cohesive rap verse on his track, And We Run, which I honestly didn't think was possible, blending rap with symphonic metal, and the track was one of the highlights lights of the album. So okay, what about the lyrics? Well, let's all be brutally honest here for a minute and admit that the lyrics are not the main reason that anyone listens to Within Temptation. But you know what? They're actually pretty solid here. Not great or anything close to important on this album, but they rarely become a hindrance and the poetry is perfectly acceptable for a Within Temptation album. And while there are points they do become a little bit 
too simplified. They do accomplish their purpose and even manage to follow a roughly cohesive theme. In this case, the wild exuberance and necessity of trying new things and taking chances. Hell, there are even leaving little fragments of nuance where the songs show the pressure of testing new ground or the hesitation that Mun might have when they know that the world is watching them make these changes, take these experimental leaps. Most of the songs, however, they're focused on the experience, the heightened adrenaline you get when leaping off into the void, and they damn near match the instrumentation perfectly in that regard. So, okay, some of you are probably wondering that if I have this much praise for this album, Where's the problem? Well, it's twofold. Half speaking to the band's production and half speaking to the band's overall instrumental direction for this album. But they both have the same root cause, which I'm going to try to explain here. The first problem, it's it's subtle, but once you hear it on this record, you won't be able to not hear it. There's a very sharp crispness to the production that makes all the sounds in the mix, they sound rougher. The guitars have more crunch, the vocals sound a lot more ragged. Every element of classical instrumentation, well, I, they, won't, they don't quite sound compressed, but the sound never really fully swells or develops a lot of texture. And coupled with the reverb and the backing chorals, you can tell that every element is trying to sharpen the sound to lend it more of an edge. And considering that this is easily within Temptation's heaviest album in years, it quickly becomes apparent that the production was intended to emphasize and accentuate that raw heaviness. And you can tell this was a definite style choice on behalf of the band. But unfortunately, I don't think this production choice works and here's why some of the grander symphonic elements lose some of their dramatic swell and texture and without a grander symphonic arrangement with more instrumental variety the music loses something for it coupled with the choice to only have a solitary ballad on the album the entire record feels rather lacking in musical dynamic which means the crescendos lose some of their weight and the tracks feel a little bit less epic, which is bizarre considering how damn hard the band is trying to evoke that feeling and that emotion. And on that note, the record definitely feels overproduced. The overuse of vocal effects, the added electronica pieces that just feel extraneous in the mix, and so many points where the mix just feels overstuffed and not in a good way. And the worst element is that some of the band's best elements are suffering for these choices. The guitar solos in particular often sound swallowed up by the rhythm guitar segments and they don't have a lot of full pressure presence within the mix, which really does strike me as the wrong direction. Now, look, the overproduction doesn't surprise me here either, and this leads to the hypothesis that I made earlier. For as much as the band is saying that they're taking bold risks and they're taking fresh chances, Within Temptation don't really step out of their comfort zone on this record. Sure, there are surprising collaborations, and occasionally the percussion gets interesting, and the album is definitely heavier, that's a point in its favor, but at the same time, I don't quite feel they went far enough in their experimentation to justify that total lyrical focus. On top of that, with the overproduction and the rap verses, you can clearly tell that Within Temptation are moving ever closer to the mainstream. And look, while they're doing it well and still holding on to some of their personality, their choices aren't placing the spotlight on all of their strengths as a band in favor of catering to a larger audience who might be more familiar with a more overprocessed sound. And look, while I will not say that the band sold out or anything ridiculous like that, I will say it reflects a band that doesn't really have a unique direction of their own to take their music and a unique focus. When, if you go back through with Them Temptations discography, especially The Silent Force, that makes a certain amount of sense. Now, look, let me stress that I really do like this album. It's a credit to the band that I can get as worked up as I do and still come here and highly recommend this album. And make no mistake, Hydra by Within Temptation is a great album that I really did enjoy, and I'm giving it an 8 out of 10. It's heavy, it's powerful, it's epic, and the performers are better than ever across the board, but it didn't quite hit me with the same impact, and all of their new, bold new steps, they don't sound that bold to me. I wanted to love this record, let me stress this, not just like it, and while it's not their worst album, it's not their best either. Either way, it's a strong symphonic metal album that the majority of their fans are going to love it, and if you're not a fan, you know what? Go ahead and take that chance and give it a listen because on Hydra, it seems more apparent than ever that with them temptation, they're willing to meet you halfway. <sighs> so yeah, thanks a lot for watching. If you'd like to like and subscribe, I'd be more than grateful. If there's any other albums coming out in 2014 that you'd like me to take a listen to, or if there's anything I might be able to do to improve my presentation, I'm more than welcome to hear it. So until then, see you next time.